Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. Now I'll break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, it's all Ethereum and Cardano. Second, Ethereum 2.0 launch rehearsal puts it on track for a 2020 release. And this is great news, as was previously reported that there may be some delays with Ethereum, but it looks like that is not going to happen. Also, Square and PayPal could intentionally be excluding Ethereum to gain Bitcoin payments monopoly ahead of ETH 2.0. This is an opinion piece, but it does ask the question, are there nefarious forces at work which are propping up Bitcoin ahead of Ethereum, even though Ethereum could be the far superior choice for payments? Also, Cardano's Gogan roadmap is scheduled for release in late October, and this is great news, especially since Gogan is going to give the functionality of smart contracts to Cardano, and this could be a game changer. And we'll round it all out with a Kobo Hardware Vault review with a chance to win the hardware plus $150 in Unstoppable Domains credit for whatever domain you'd like to buy. So we'll go over all that, but first let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is October 12th, almost 3 p.m. Texas time. Watch out. It's getting pretty late, but what do we got? So Bitcoin is at 11,562. I like those numbers. 1.6% for 24 hours, but a whopping 8.4% for the week. So Bitcoin is looking strong and where Bitcoin goes, usually that's where the altcoins go. Ethereum is up almost 4%, 388, probably will bust through that $400 mark this week, hopefully. Tether's Tether and XRP is XRP. Binance coin, 8.2% up, fantastic. And that is uh, hitting the $30 mark. Now I am not a Binance coin investor, but other people are. And I would wanna say congratulations to you Binance coin holders. That is a massive run up. Also, Bitcoin cash up almost 10% for the week. Again, not a holder, but good for you guys. Chainlink, <laughs> I am a holder and it's up 23% for the week. So not too shabby, 6.4 for the day. Actually, it looks like everything's up. Polka dots, Cardano. Uh, let's see if anything's really fantastic up out there. 3, 2, 4, 4, 1.6, 4, 4. 4.2 for Zcash. Zcash has been a pretty good run, 20%. I think it's all because of the uh, functionality that Gemini has been allowed by the New York State to give uh, private transactions to be given a go. So congratulations, Zcash holders. VeChain up a whopping 0.1. Eh, wah, wah. And that's about it. 5.2 for synthetics. That's pretty good. 3.0 for compound, 3.9. So uh, not too bad. Ooh, Kusama, 13.2. Although, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Kusama, it seems like it's a staging area for Polkadot. So I don't really understand why that actually goes up. I don't, I would always think that a main net would be better, but I could be wrong. Anyhow, let's bring in today's top story. So first up, second Ethereum 2.0 launch rehearsal put on track for a 2020 release. So that is great news. So what is going on? So there was a new test net dubbed Zinkin, and that launch occurred on Monday at 12 p.m. And like previous attempts, was a smooth launch with enough participation and no major bugs. So that is great news because we had reported that there may have been a delay in Ethereum 2.0 up to a year, but it looks like those reports may have been exaggerated. And that means great news for Ethereum 2.0 because this has to happen. With the problems with transactions per second or TPS being slow or not as fast as it could be, with the problems with the gas fees being so high, these advancements need to happen because this space moves at a rapid pace and these things need to happen. That's all it has to be. So anyhow, this testnet was uh, followed by the bittersweet launch of Spadina, which was the first rehearsal that aimed to test the launch pad for stakers or uh, phase zero of the Ethereum 2.0 roadmap. So if you don't know, uh, Ethereum 2.0, it's going to phase zero was just for staking or moving from proof of work to proof of stake. And that's hopefully going to happen before the end of this year. Next year, we're going to get this thing called sharding, which is always funny when I say it. And I know you're probably giggling too, but hey, it is what it is. So with sharding, that's going to massively increase uh, the amount of TPS or transactions per second. Hopefully that can come about next year. I think that is going to be bigger than going from proof of work to proof of stake, but I could be wrong. So the problem of the testnet of the one called Spadina, it suffered from low participation rates, which meant that a lot of validators who signed up for their testnet failed to bring their clients online. And the reason this happened, because of analysis showed that there were bugs 
in clients accounted for a significant portion of the problem. So never good when you're testing things out and you find all the bugs. Actually, I take that back. It's good when you find the bugs and get rid of them. It's never great when they keep popping up again and again and again. But with Zinkin, it looks like there was very few bugs and there was massive participation. That's great. And it states maintaining a high participation rate is crucial for the integrity of the network as more than 66% of the stake must confirm blocks in order for the blockchain to be considered finalized mean that blocks can no longer be reversed and we don't have that thing called double payments. So Zinkin became the first testnet that passed the finalized threshold within a few minutes of its existence, proving to be the most successful testnet launch so far. While it was still below 90% participation, it was above 75, so we will take it. Ethereum 2.0 developers were pleased with the launch, noting that the Discord chat is silent. And if you've been around the uh, the social medias, the Twitter, the Discord, the Telegram, there can be some pretty negative people out there. So uh, if there's silence and nobody says anything bad about it, that's a win. We'll take it. So this is all good news. And even Vitalik Buterin, who was present during the call, added that the team may still do a few more rehearsals, but they'll likely be uh, reserved to developers. And that's good news because it means they're going to move forward. You also know that readiness is difficult to gauge and requires input from all participants, but there has been good progress made in this recently. ETH 2.0 Phase 0 will feature the launch of Beacon Chain, the first building block of the new blockchain. And just so you know, and I get this question a lot, uh, but the question always is, is, what do I have to do between Ethereum 1.0 and 2.0? The answer is nothing. Life on Ethereum 1.0 will continue as before, though, since the two blockchains will have nearly no interaction with each other beyond a one-way deposit contract. So nothing to do right now. Just wait until everything gets rolling, and it should hopefully all work out. So phase zero uh, looks to be a go, a launch before the end of this year. And that would be great news for Ethereum and Ethereum token holders. What comes next for 2021? Hopefully they can get to phase one with all the sharding and rollups and all those things, which will increase the TPS or transactions per second. And we can finally get Ethereum where it needs to be super fast. All right, let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on. Next up, Square and PayPal could intentionally be excluding Ethereum to gain Bitcoin payments monopoly ahead of ETH 2.0. This was an interesting article because in my opinion, uh, Bitcoin is not a payment system. Anyhow, so there's been speculation as to why ETH is being left out of new and big investment portfolios, despite being the second largest crypto by market cap and popular for payments. Uh, sure. I know it's popular for projects and it's popular for decentralized finance and smart contracts, but I didn't realize it was that popular for payments, but okay. So last week's 50 million Bitcoin investment by Square has especially highlighted this bias, despite the fact that Square's CEO, Jack Dorsey, only advocates for Bitcoin and not altcoins. And that's true. Jack is a huge proponent of Bitcoin on his Twitter handle, which he also owns. Uh, it only says one word. Bitcoin. So he is not interested in anything else. And uh, it was not a very surprising play, even though people were losing their minds. Ooh, Square, they put 50 million to Bitcoin. Sure, they've been that way forever. If Microsoft came out or Tesla came out and did that, then I would have my head exploded. But it is what it is. Anyhow, according to the newest theory, PayPal and Square are in a rush to establish themselves as the main Bitcoin payment intermediaries before Ethereum gets to launch its more superior ETH 2.0 later this year. So let me say that again. PayPal and Square are in a rush to establish themselves. PayPal and Square. So that's going to happen. We reported this a couple months ago, actually, about uh, PayPal. They wanted to offer cryptocurrencies. And as far as I read, it wasn't just Bitcoin. It was going to be at least the top three or, two or five. Uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, maybe Tether. Uh, XRP, th those things like the like. So uh, I, I'm not for sure it's just going to be Bitcoin. They're you know pushing it all out, but it is amazing. I think when when PayPal comes into play and people open up their account, they're like, "Whoa, buy Bitcoin? What's that? Oh, I've heard of Bitcoin. Yeah, I used to. How much was it before? Three thousand dollars. What is it now? Almost twelve thousand. Wow. And then there's big companies like Fidelity Digital Assets with eight trillion assets under management, and Ameritrade and Paul Tudor Jones. And then Square with Jack Dorsey. I know Jack Dorsey. He could do Twitter. And then oh, MicroStrategy, how much they have a billion. So do you see where I'm going with this? People will start to get more inoculated or exposed to Bitcoin. And that's good news for everybody because people are waiting to see things seven to 10 times before they actually buy it or get it, whatever you want to call it. It's a sales statistic. And it totally plays out here. So when people start seeing Bitcoin again and again and again, 
And I think it will usher in, hopefully, the next bull run. And I can only see big news for 2021. Anyhow, finishing up. The theory was a, was a reply to Ari Paul's tweet, another crypto trends observer who said that PayPal will probably launch its support for Bitcoin by the end of the year. By not listing Ethereum for payments alongside Bitcoin, both Square and PayPal are trying to get ahead of Ethereum, I guess. That's flimsy. Lastly, Vitalik Buren said this, more people should support Ethereum for payments. The nice thing about supporting ETH is that you are just not accepting ETH. You also get support for MK, Uniswap, Wrap, Bitcoin, or WBTC, and every stable coin for free. And there's already like three working layer two scaling solutions on the main net. And it's true. Jack Dorsey, he's actually giving out money to developers. It's like a scholarship to help them develop the layer two solution of Lightning. And it's still not going well. I mean, I'm sure they're making progress and good for them, but I just don't see it as a payment solution. I mean, unless something drastic comes about, but you know, who knows? There's a lot of smart, there's a lot more smarter people out there than I am, that's for sure. So hopefully they uh, figure it out and maybe it can be something fantastic. Just right now, the just cannot be what it is. Uh, I was around 2017 when they tried to make it a payment structure and it just about collapsed. So if you thought that Ethereum was bad with their high gas fees during the DeFi craze, holy in 2017, it was it was pretty bad with Bitcoin trying to be used for transactions. It just did not happen. So something has to come to the rescue. Maybe it's Lightning. Maybe it's a Layer 2 solution. I have no idea. But uh, as of right now, there's no way that Bitcoin is a payment solution. And then we'll finish up with this. The presence of Bitcoin over ETH could be a debate about more money versus crypto technology, according to blockchain developer Dan Held. He states, most tech folks fundamentally misunderstand understand money and purpose of Bitcoin, so they missed the bigger picture. And that's what a lot of people have told me in the comment section. They go, you don't understand, it's not a currency, it's not just blockchain, it's going to be a protocol. Just like TCP, IP, HTTPS, all the different things that were built for the internet, that is what blockchain is going, or that is what Bitcoin is going to be. And I think to myself, I mean, can you really build that much on Bitcoin without it actually collapsing? I Again, what happened in 2017? There better be some super awesome layer two, maybe layer three solutions or whatever else is out there because I don't see it actually happening. Now, I could be wrong. Let me know where I'm wrong in the comment section and let's move on. Last up, Cardano's Gogan roadmap scheduled for release in late October. And uh, this is good news because uh, this is going to give smart contract functionality to Cardano along with maybe some ERC-20 swaps. So that's interesting. So states here, Gogan Roadmap, which will reportedly be released in 29th of October. According to Hoskinson, Gogan will be released in a series of updates and hard fork events, each of which will add another layer of functionality to the system, similar to Shelly. And Shelly uh, is what gave us the mainnet, what gave us decentralization for Cardano. So yeah, we're just, uh, we're just trucking right along. And that is one thing about Cardano. I will say that. They have a goal. They have a timeline. It may not be totally perfect, but they pretty much stick to it. So it's why I'm a heavy investor in Cardano. And Charles Hoskins states this, Gogan is a spectrum. Already part of it has been delivered and will be delivering more parts soon. This update allows off-chain applications to start using the Cardano blockchain, which has directly resulted in 30 commercial deals in the pipeline. So hopefully these deals and the good news will actually uh, translate to price action. It doesn't really work too well for Ripple. I mean, Ripple has, you know, they come out there and they talk about all the different uh, uh, bank development deals and, and and which banks are using what and how great it is. But it doesn't do much for XRP. It's because the banks are using the technology that the company Ripple has. They're not using XRP right now. And then people, I know if you're in the XRP army, I get you. You're going to tell me, hey, you know what? They're doing it behind closed doors. They're just waiting to flip the switch and blah, blah, blah. Great. Maybe some year it will happen. But right now it's not going down. Again, if it happens, I'll be the biggest cheerleader, but I'm just saying right now, it's been lagging. But hey, that's true for a lot of different projects, so don't feel bad. Anyhow, coming down, finish this up. The founder of Cardano concluded the AMA by underlining his optimism about the future. He states, look, every month we're going to have hundreds of projects. We talk about adoption. We're going to blow everybody out of the water. And that is one thing about Charles. I will give him this. There is no shortage of confidence in what he says. It is a non-wavering statement every single time. If you watch his AMAs, uh, that guy's got, uh, he's confident. And that's a good thing that you want from a CEO. You want someone to come up and go like, look, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, this, and it's going to happen. And then it happens. And that's all I can really ask for about a project. So uh, hopefully this all works out. I'm, I'm excited about what's going to happen with Cardano. Maybe 2021 is going to be the year and we will see. 
And just to wrap this up, um, the roadmap itself. So this is the Cardano roadmap. Uh, so we've got uh, Byron, which was you know the basic foundation, Shelly, which we, they just launched, or we just launched, and uh, now it is truly decentralized in its own mainnet. And here we are right in the middle with Gogan. And this is for smart contract functionality, Basho for scaling, and Voltaire for governance. That sounds fantastic. And this is what it states. And this is what gets me excited. It states, the work for Gogan has been underway in parallel with Shelly. And when complete, will allow users from technical and non-technical backgrounds to create and execute functional smart contracts on the Cardano network. Let me read that one more time. Technical and non-technical backgrounds to create and execute functional smart contracts on the Cardano network. That's big. That's big for somebody like me, who I am not a developer in any way, shape, or form, not a coder, nothing like that, just an investor. So you're telling me that I can create a smart contract and maybe do something with, I don't know, like a loan, like something with maybe real estate, maybe with business, and maybe have, I don't know, somebody double check it on the side and go, hey, is this correct? And then off you go, and it can be a great thing as far as a smart contract, eliminate middleman, middlemen, and maybe decrease the price or costs for these contracts that I may have to do in the future. And I can do this on Cardano, and it allows me to do things in a non-technical way. If that is the case, I am all on board and I will probably be dumping more. No, I shouldn't say dumping. I will be dollar cost averaging <laughs> more into Cardano if that is the case. So let me know what you think in the comment section. And that finishes up the stories. Now we're going to get into the review. And I'm just going to tell you right now, this review for it's a hardware wallet called Kobo and it did not go well. Here's what I'm talking about. Let's jump in the office. Okay. And like I said, this is the Kobo wallet. I'm going to do a complete review. The review is very long. It's uh, almost 20 minutes long. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the snippet of the most uh, fascinating part where we're able to use the unstoppable domain address, which is danteaches.crypto, as the actual Bitcoin address. So it's, uh, it's very slick and very neat. That's all I'm going to show. And then if you actually want to go and look at the the uh, entire review and check the whole thing out, I'm going to put that over on my second channel, uh, Dan Clips, Digital Asset News Clips, uh, because this is just, it's just a very long piece. If you go over there and watch it and you like what you see, uh, just put in the comment section, I want a Kobo, C-O-B-O, -O, and we'll do uh, a random drawing. And whoever gets it, uh, this will be drawn by Unstoppable Domains, not by me. Whoever gets it will get the Kobo wallet uh, for free. And also you get $150 credit to use towards Unstoppable Domains. So again, I'm just going to show you a real quick snippet. And then I'll sh I'll send you the link over there to Dan Clips, where you can watch the entire thing. Again, it's, all, it's uh, about 20 minutes. But just so you know, uh, this is no nano ledger killer. That's all I'll say. And I'm going to click on send. Here's where all the magic happens. So receiving address, danlikes.crypto. So instead of putting a very long address in, this is all I got to do. And it's going to check it. And there it is. And you can see the address 31QSUD as the exact same address as the one that I have in Unstoppable Domain. So how much I want to put in here? Let's go for $15. Looks about right. And I'll just put a little memo in here so I can remind myself of what's going on. Kobo to uh, Unstoppable Domains wallet. Now I'll click return and we're gonna click on send. Okay, let's take a look at that. Looks pretty good. And I'm gonna click on confirm at the very bottom. And check it, it looks pretty good. So now this is where uh, we have another key we have to use. So the first key has been turned. Now we need to get the signature from the Kobo wallet. So we are in the app. We need to fire up that wallet and actually sign this transaction. And after we sign it, then we have to broadcast it to the network. So let's uh, jump out of here and go grab the Kobo hardware wallet. Because remember the hardware wallet, all we need for that is so we can sign those keys. Let's do that right now. Well, if that interests you, then fantastic. I'm going to leave you a link. This is for Digital Asset News Clips. This is my second channel. I made this channel for two reasons. One is because uh, time is money, and I get a little bit too long and winded sometimes. And two, it's because I needed a backup in case uh, YouTube shuts me down. So uh, the link to the second channel uh, is in the description of every one of my videos, and it's going to look just like this.
But what I'll do for this one is at the very top, uh, the, uh, under the uh, description, it'll be a link to the actual video, to the very long video. And I'll put that at the very top so you can find it super easy and go check that out. Uh, all right, remember, so if you want to win the uh, Kobo wallet, um, these things retail for between around $100 or so, uh, just go over there, comment, uh, I want a Kobo wallet, and then uh, we will uh, draw it at random. Also, you'll be getting a $150 uh, to use at Unstoppable Domains to pick up any kind of domain uh, that you actually want that has a that will have a .crypto and .zill uh, domain. So good luck with that, and uh, go check it out. All right, so that's it. So I just want to give some random shout-outs to people who have signed up for Digital Asset News. Really appreciate it. And here they are. Stone Crypt, Chef Dan, Steve Ehrlich, Ital Schur, Pac Bid. Jamie Watson, uh, Romain Maurice, TTP911, uh -huh, Ether Black, and David Sontag. So thanks so much for signing up. Really appreciate it. Uh, again, thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Much appreciated. If you like these types of videos, there's going to be two more that's going to pop up on your left and right. And one of those is going to lead you directly to Digital Asset News Clips. So you can watch the review of the uh, Kobo wallet and potentially win one plus $150 uh, in Unstoppable Domains credits. So go ahead and check that out at the very end, uh, which is going to pop up right now. Thanks so much. See you in the next one.